I'm Mark Dawson from The Self-Publishing Show, and this is Self-Publishing Spotlight, where we shine a light on the indie authors who are changing the world of publishing one book at a time. Hello, and welcome to The Self-Publishing Spotlight. We meet indie authors at all stages of their careers and ask them a series of five questions. Five questions about their process, their mistakes, and their successes. Five answers that will help you level up your own author career. My name's Tom Ashford, and I'm part of The Self-Publishing Formula. Don't forget that you can get your self-publishing resource kit at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash starter kit. This week's guest is Eileen Mueller. She's written nine books in the fantasy genre and she lives in New Zealand. Welcome, Eileen. Hello, Tom. How are you today? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. The time zone difference for us is a a tricky one, but we've managed to make it work. Yeah, that's true. I I believe it's early morning where you are. Yes, it's nine o'clock in the morning, but it's like 10 in the evening for you, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay, well, would you like to start by uh, going into maybe some more detail about the the different books that you've written? Yes, I have a young adult fantasy series. It's epic fantasy um, with dragon riders, and that's called Riders of Fire. And it's managed to win a couple of New Zealand awards, which I was completely surprised about, um, having them indie published and then scooping up a couple of literary awards. Nice. and I've also written several other dragon-themed books for middle graders or chapter books. Nice, cool. And you said yeah, before before we went live, you said you did a bit of a, a bit of dark fantasy as well. Yeah, when I first um, came out of my closet as a writer in 2013, I attended our um, National Science Fiction and Fantasy Conference and met a whole lot of people that were doing horror anthology so I got invited to participate <laughs> so my first uh, published work was actually a very short story about a, a boy with a dragon under his bed didn't end well for the father let me tell you that <laughs> <laughs> they sent me a sample of five of the stories in the anthology um, when they invited me to participate and I was terrified because the stories were so scary I thought oh, there's no way I can actually into this anthology and here was a great opportunity for me as a brand new writer. So um, I flipped the page and there was another one. It was a really, really funny, it was a hilarious horror, really creepy, really, really funny story. And I decided that I could probably do a dark story if it had humour in it. And I didn't know whether I could write humour, but somehow I managed to. It was quite fun. Nice. Okay, if we dive into the, uh, the five questions. Question number one is why do you write? So was there a particular reason you started writing? There is. I write for the exhilaration of creating worlds full of characters I love with emotions that matter. Nice. So that's a um, that's a very succinct answer because we were in a workshop at Romance Writers New Zealand a few years ago, and they asked us to list ten different reasons why we wrote. A lot of people wrote down money, <laughs> cut off money, cut off this. You know, why is it? What feeds your soul? Why do you write? And they keep getting us to strike re- reasons off until we only had one left and that was the only one left on my list nice but is there was there a particular reason that you write um write fantasy yeah i believe that fantasy helps people to process their emotions and experiences and i believe that reading books um, or any any sort of fiction actually helps readers make sense of the world around them there's been studies done that show that um, stories that have quite high emotional content develop empathy in readers and um, my stories are jam-packed full of emotion and tension and all sorts of adrenaline fueled adventures. So um, I, I, I know that my readers are readers that love emotional roller coasters. So that's what I give them. Nice. And uh, so you've written nine books. Are they all uh, tradi- uh, sorry? Are they all self-published? No, two of them have been published with a, a small indie publisher okay. who started off self-publishing her own work under the You Say Which Way banner, so it's interactive fiction, like Pick a Path stories, where you read along and then choose where you're going. And the beauty of those with ebooks is that you just press a hyperlink, you don't have to turn the page, so you make a choice, press a hyperlink, and bingo, you're in, you're in the next part of the story. Uh, and they're written for kids, they're really cool for reluctant readers. And the first one I wrote of those was Dragon's Realm, which is set in my Riders of Fire world. Um, but I made it for kids. I made it funny. You could tame the evil monsters with chocolate. <laughs> um, but it starts off with the opening line, hey, fart face. And there's uh, police chasing you, chasing you through the, um, through the park. And you have to make a decision as to where you're going to hide. And you end up going through a portal. 
and ending up in Dragon's Realm. So it's quite a cool book because it um, pair it run it won a um, Sir Julius Vogel Award, which is a science fiction fantasy award in um, from New Zealand. Um, because there's 22 different endings, and each of them shows you a different way of dealing with bullies. But none of it's preaching. It's just loads of good fun and a rollicking adventure. And, yeah. Nice. And whatever gets kids reading as well. Yeah, yeah, it's been really good. Nice. And I mean, I, I, I go and do school visits and wear big dragon wings, and I've got brightly coloured rainbow hair, and my dragon wings. Are, sorry, my New Zealand accent's shocking. <laughs> <laughs> my dragon. You know, how's that? <laughs> my dragon wings are all multicolored, and so we read that. You know, we read that story, and all the kids get to choose where they're going, and they they get awarded blood stains or medals depending on their choices and things. So it's it's a it's a really fun um, series, the You Say Which Way series. So that's pub, that's published by the Fairy Tale Factory, which is a small indie indie press, and there's about six New Zealand writers that write for them. So that's quite cool. Nice. Uh, question number two is how do you write? So do you tend to plot your stories out or uh, pants them, as they say? Mm, I think a lot of people do things differently. I started um, with seeing a dragon's wingtip in my mind's eye um, with loads of multicolored scales, and then I built a whole story around it. I didn't know what I was doing. I couldn't write. I wrote 223,000 words in a year, and then my manuscript was finished. <laughs> And I gave it to lots of friends eagerly, and I feel so sorry for those friends because I didn't know how to plot. <laughs> and my prose was probably pretty boring back then. <laughs> uh, ten years later, or nine years later, is when those books were actually, that one book was split into two books, which is now Azara, book one, and Dragon Hero, book two, in my Riders of Fire series. Um, and I learned to plot. I learned how to write. I learned how to layer an emotion, how to build more complex characters. So, um, and... I, I tend to plot in Excel. I don't know if you have met anyone else who plots in Excel, but I have these complicated spreadsheets that you know include character arcs and um, themes and things, and I do that. And then I have recently, my last two books, I've dictated. Um, I dictated them really, really fast. Within a month, I dictated two books, and then I sat down and, and rewrote them because my dictated drafts are really messy. Big hot mess. <laughs> They're fabulous, but I'll stop and talk to someone and forget to turn off the dictation machine, and I'm, I'm out mobile. So I, I dictated my books walking for eight hours a day around the beaches and the parks and the botanical gardens. It was fantastic. But now I dictate and then go home and transcribe it and do all that all in one day or two days instead of actually dictating for six or eight hours a day like I did when I first got my machine. Yeah. I don't know, Tom. When you, when you start something new, do you tend to leap in boots and all? Or do you do things slowly and at a measured pace? Um, I don't even know, honestly. <laughs> but I know that uh, Kevin Janderson, we've just had him on the podcast, and he was talking about um, dictation because he uses it now for all of his books. He's written like 165 books or something. Um, and most of them he's used dictation because it just means he can get out of the house, you know, write a chapter on the way somewhere and then walk back and write a chapter on the way back. And clearly it works very, very well. Yeah, and mine works. I have a little dictaphone. So the equipment I use, in case anyone's interested, is I use a Sony dictaphone, which has a little USB port. So you just plug it straight into your computer and get home and open a little app, and then it's transcribing when you do the dishes or grab yourself a cup of tea or whatever it is you want to do. Put on the laundry if you're a mum like I am, um, or someone working from home. And I get to dictate out and you know, everywhere. It's just beautiful. You can hear the sea and things in the background sometimes on some of the, um, not on the transcriptions, of course, but on the recordings, but the microphone handles it all. And that's a Speechware Flexi mic, which is a tiny little wire that hooks over your ear and sits in front of your mouth and records everything and cuts out a lot of noise. And that's brilliant. Yeah. Nice. And I use Dragon, Dragon Naturally Speaking. So question number three is, are you a full-time author? If you are, how did you get there? And if you aren't, what steps are you taking to make it happen? Okay, I am a full-time author. Um, I live at home with my husband, so we um, don't have to rely solely on my income, which is quite good at the moment. Um, I was a mum at home with lots of kids and started writing, and then I took on some part-time work, and I made sure that I, when my part-time contract finished, that I had two books ready to go so I could live semi-rapid release and that was the end of 2018 i knew i had a contract finishing i was working on a um, project for sir peter jackson's great war exhibition he'd built a fabulous war museum here in wellington that had a, a limited contract and i did a lot of their pr and communications for the last year and a half 
Wow. And I knew that that was all finishing in November, so I launched my books two weeks before <laughs> two weeks before the contract ended, and waited for the money to come in, <laughs> and they did really well. So I was very pleased. So I haven't been back to work since then. I was ready to do a semi rapid release. I released books one and two three weeks apart, and then wrote a couple of magnets. I did everything backwards. Wrote my magnets afterwards, uh, and then started publicising everything like crazy. <laughs> Whatever works. Okay, well, question number four is, what mistakes do you think you've made and what have you got right? So I've made several mistakes. I think I waited a long time before finding a community of writers. So if you're out there writing in your closet and feeling like you don't know anybody, I'd say reach out online or in your local community and find people to work with. Um, I went to lots of writing workshops and collected everybody's email addresses and then formed a massive critique group of about 30 people, which didn't work. And shortly thereafter, abandoned that and pulled two or three people out of that critique group that worked well. And we formed a critique group that, that went for years. And then I joined another one as well. So I was actually in three critique groups a month, oh, wow. which was bringing critiquing sort of 40 to 50,000 words of each other's writing between those groups in a month, which was crazy at times. Probably meant I wasn't writing as fast, but I was learning a lot about how to write and how to layer things. And we all learned a lot together. We lifted each other's games. So that was great. Uh, another mistake I made was um, we launched um, our first ebook. We did an anthology, three of us did, called Twisty Christmas Tales in 2013 and sold about two or three handfuls. <laughs> and thought, oh, indie publishing sucks. We didn't sell anything. <laughs> so, um, we then decided we'd launch a different version the next year. So I think whenever you make a mistake, you can learn from it. So we took that tender on its head, launched a local version, got two top New Zealand children's authors into it, and we hit number two on the independent bookstore charts in New Zealand. It's a small market, but we actually did a modest print run and we had to do two more reprints in six weeks and sold everything before Christmas. So it was absolutely brilliant. Um, but that was local local sort of indie printing. It wasn't big online stuff on Amazon. So then I felt a little bit like I didn't know how to market. So that's when I went to Fairy Tale Factory. Um, she had actually submitted a story to our anthology and liked the way we edited and said, would you be interested in writing for us? And I realised I knew her. New Zealand is tiny. <laughs> we only have two or three degrees of separation. <laughs> so I had known her. I'd actually flattered with her in, um, or been her roommate for the American listeners <laughs> when I'd been <laughs> and we knew each other and we hadn't seen each other for about 10 years so now we're best of buddies and um, she's brilliant to Amazon ads so when I decided to then write my own um, middle grade dragon fiction I knew I was going to publish my big story so I decided everything I did would be dragon themed for a few years so that I would have you know um, readers that would cross between the genres which has sort of worked I thought the children would grow up and read my young adult stuff but no the adults and young adults read my kids stuff <laughs> It's interesting, isn't it? It's yeah. easy to find you in that old market with a middle grade one. So they read down because it's the same world and got some similar characters. And it's fun. And it's fun. So going to here was a great thing. And uh, I learned Amazon ads quite early. So that was something I did right. One thing I did wrong is that when everything changed and I was busy writing a book and busy running around doing a lot of projects here in New Zealand, I got too busy to go back and tweak all my Amazon ads. And my sale was actually dipped for quite a while. Then. So I'm just working on that now and um, working my way back up. So, you know, there's always things you can learn from everything you want. And I was really lucky to, to um, I've been really lucky. I've won four national awards in New Zealand for my writing. Nice. But that's been, yeah, it's been quite something. So, yeah, I've been lucky. Cool. So question number five is, what's your final piece of advice for authors starting out in indie publishing? To work on something you love that readers will love. Um, I've been lucky to um, that people love dragons, and I happen to love dragons, so that's been a really good match. Um, I mentioned to you when we were um, before we went on there that I was actually writing another manuscript, and um, everyone had critiqued everything I'd done right up to that date. So I was desperate to bring on something to a critique group, so I hunted through an old manuscript and pulled out one of my dragon chapters and. There was a woman that loved dragons and just said, you've got to publish this. And everybody said, you know, we really think this could be successful. And I actually didn't believe them until I launched them. And um, they raised up the charts and did really well. So I think finding a market is, is quite important. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and yeah, the other thing is work on your craft. Um, 
it takes a while to become good at writing. They say you've got to write half a million words to get good at it. Some people do, some people don't. But work on it with other people. Don't don't beat yourself up in isolation trying to improve on your own. Get feedback and don't be afraid to spot manuscripts and have a look at someone else's. You'll gel with some people, you won't with others. But I think that that's really important. And in terms of finding those people, you've got fabulous communities with self-publishing formula and 20 books um, to 50k group. There are a lot of different writers groups online on Facebook and there are some forums. Um, have you heard of Polly Lyle? She runs a writing school and I signed up to do courses here 10 years ago when I first started, or 11 years probably now, and met some amazing writers online now, and I know that some of them could take each other's work. So. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, that's uh, good advice. And those are your five questions. So thank you very much for coming on. And thank you. And if anyone would like to test drive my um, Writers of Fire fiction, they can get my free books at eileenmullerauthor.com. And there's a tab there that says free books so they can pick up Bronze Dragon and Silver Dragon and see if they like dragon adventures as much as I do. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tom. Bye. That's it for this week's self-publishing spotlight. Don't forget that you can get your free self-publishing resource kit at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash starter kit. And if you want to appear as a guest on this show, send us brief details about yourself and your writing at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash spotlight dash guest. I'm Tom Ashford and I'll see you again next week. Bye.